question that I want to start off with out here, though, is where where does tracking and seeing really uh, begin or or end? So for for tracking for you, is tra was tracking different than seeing for you? Um, is one question to to think about on this walk. Mm -hmm. Uh, how does tracking apply to uh, seeing? Uh, is there any difference? Uh, for, for me personally, tracking does have a lot to do with seeing. So when we look at tracking, we can look at it as an activity that we go and do. We're going to go out right now. We're going to look for tracks and sign of wild animals. Um, but is there really a distinction between these types of observations and seeing, just in general, and tracking? Boy, I couldn't, I don't see any distinction. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, you know, my tracking book's called Tracking and the Art of Seeing <laughs> for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, it's a, all about observation, and that's the basis of the whole thing is observation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that's what the video we're doing here is about, too. It's about observation. Now, in your, uh, you haven't been teaching tracking for now, I don't know, maybe 10 years or something, right? Over 10 years? Yeah, it's been a while. And uh, you haven't actively probably been exploring, like, going tracking in the way you used to. Correct. But did tracking for you, I'm not just saying looking at animal signs and, and things like that, did tracking really turn off, you know, because you weren't teaching anymore? Or is tracking something that, other than the, the specifics of the animal sign, is tracking something else for you other than looking for animal signs and, and track? Yeah, yeah. Well, for me, it was always something more than that. It was, again, simply, to put it simply, it was about observation. And that doesn't stop when I come out of the woods. Mm -hmm. You know, there's still self-introspection, self-observation. I mean, you go to bed and, and you lay down and you, one of my most favorite things to do is just lay there for a while and just simply observe. And my eyes are closed, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about even a visual observation, but just observation itself. Just even if it's totally silent and you're listening to the silence. That's still tracking. Yeah, we could call it that. Yeah. We could, yeah. It's part of that. All right. Well, let's take this walk around and look at some other things. Because there's some fun things, just because I've come here for years. I remember on this, uh, the, your tank here. I remember walking by this with the apprentices, you know, these, these little squiggles on here. And I think at the time, you know, they were a, a mystery to us. I don't know if they were a mystery to you at the time. No, I didn't know what was making them. Right. We didn't know what was making them at right. the time. Right. right. Um, you know, really neat little pattern going back. Oh, they're forth, just incredible. They're Different changing. kinds of patterns. and yeah. I mean, from when we were looking at it years ago, it's a totally changed pattern. So it's not even the same one, the pattern that I had seen when we used to walk right. by. But it's changed. It's beautiful, actually. Yeah, so even on the Look at this one here. Look at that. Yeah. Look at the little, very, very sharp little edges on it. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Matter of fact, I think I might. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's very interesting, Pat. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to photograph that. But there's one thing about it that it's easy to just look at this and then say, well, that who, who did that, and then walk on. But the way you're looking at this right now, is seeing this in a different way than just looking at it as what did it. Right. Right. There's a level. Absolutely. You, can, you, really, you, you see something in looking at this that is beyond the words of who did this. Right. There's something reflected to your eyes here. The pattern, the shape, the colors, the contrast, yep. all that that's coming through there. And it's so much of our track, so much of tracking isn't about 
the labels and the names of the things necessarily even associated with. That's part of the fun of it. I mean, to solve the mystery to who maybe did it. Yeah, that's and part of it, definitely. It. But there's, right. a, there's a seeing of what this is, just for the sake of seeing what it is. Yeah. Um, that, that stands out for me as something that's part of tracking, part of seeing. Uh, just, just yeah, and that's probably why, you know, photography and tracking were two of my passions mm -hmm. because it's about, again, it's about observation. Now I'm looking at these patterns. Well, now I know what made them, but even if I didn't, um, I'm looking at all the different, like, I just think this is incredible with all these little lines coming down. We, you know, but just observing, um, the more you observe, the more stuff comes up. Yep. More stuff we haven't even seen yet. Yeah. <laughs> even there. But it's interesting to me at the time, we didn't even know what this was. And you know what happened to me then, when I didn't know it was years ago? I didn't even take the time then to look at it the way we just looked at it now. Right. right. I didn't know it, so I walked right. away from it. <laughs> because I went to something that I thought I could know, rather than really explore and look at what I didn't mm -hmm. know. Um, that's another thing. Even when you don't know it, it's easy to walk away from, from it. Um, but this, you know, has now been documented and people brought it to my attention to what makes this, you know, the pattern there. Right. I mean, if you knew it real quick, you wouldn't have observed it as closely and you wouldn't know it as well. Uh, these, these patterns are just fascinating the more you look at them. Mm -hmm. well, I'll be out here with my camera. I wonder what Keep your the, mitts off of it. I wonder what the, the uh, <laughs> regular lines on here. Just to kind of, this looks like someone maybe. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of tracking is um, speculating. You know, it's observation, and there's a bit of speculation. Because I'm wondering now what might have done this. Well, well yeah, all your experiences, the, all of who you are is layering on that. And your brain's going to come up with something. Right. See, the, the memory of the experience yeah. of the things I know are coming up to think about what has done this yep. pattern there. I mean, I can, I can look at it real closely, but I'm engaging with it in a way that I'm visualizing based on memory. Of, right. Or even thinking And you might come up with, you, your brain might come up with something. And either you you could stop there and buy it, yeah. <laughs> you know, or you could remain open and just have that as a loose assumption. Mm -hmm. Remain open, and that keeps that keeps the learning process going. That keeps other. Uh, maybe it wasn't that, you know. So that openness is really important. All the assumptions, um, if they remain fluid, you remain intelligent. So once you your assumptions become solid and you get attached to them, then you can't learn any further. You may be right, you may not be right, but learning has stopped. Mm -hmm. Intelligence has stopped. Hmm. Now there's that openness again. Right, and I think it really becomes apparent in discussion with another another person about the things that we're observing. You might see this as something else that did this, and I might come up with an idea of what might have done this but here. It, depends, it really becomes apparent. It depends on your conditioning. <laughs> right? Your conditioning is making the decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can be like totally dependent dependent on that condition and stuck in that conditioning if there isn't openness. Openness sets us free from the condition, the conditioning. So the conditioning continues to move instead of it being cut off, stopped. Mm -hmm. 
So again, it needs to flow in this, this openness hmm. to be fluent then. And questions will arise in that openness. I mean, uh, it's all part of it. Yep. Right? It doesn't mean I can't, I'm not, I'm not able to question what this is or ask questions about things. It's all part of, all right. part of it. Yep. Which is the thing, something that's often misinterpreted that it is a detraction from uh, engaging in our, in our world. You know, that uh, we should just purely observe this just for what it is without even trying to think about what might have happened there. You know, when I was actively teaching, I would always tell my students that you got to get out and do your field time. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to learn this. You can read all the books you want, but you got to get out there and look at thousands and thousands of tracks, track an animal especially. One animal for one day. See all the variations in, in the tracks that animal can leave. And all that is layering in your bio computer. All that information is layering and accumulating in your bio computer. When you see a track, the next day you walk out into the forest and you see a track, all that information is layering on that track and your bio computer is going to come up with an ID for that track. Mm -hmm. But the thing I always cautioned is, that doesn't mean it's right. Mm -hmm. The more tracks you see, the more likely it's going to be right. But there's always a possibility that it's wrong. So there has to always be an openness in that process. Mm -hmm. you know? So that, yes, yeah, so, so thought is absolutely necessary and memory is absolutely necessary in that whole process, but something, uh, in order for there to be flexibility and room for change, and which is real intelligence, there has to be an openness to the fact that that is just the mechanical process of the brain and it could be wrong. That leaves you open to the possibility of learning something else about the trip. I guess my question is like, if someone's a completely beginner and they have no prior experience with this type of knowledge of what makes holes in the ground like this, and they haven't looked at any books, how does one go about knowing what did this other than through like a trial and error observation or researching? All they're left with is observation, but they still have to, like you were pointing out earlier, there has to be, they have to put their field time in. Mm -hmm. And they have to do a, a lot of observation in the field before stuff like that is going to become familiar and they're going to know what they're looking at. So memory does have a real big part in all this. Yep. But memory can also trip us up and, you know, <laughs> come up with a long, it can get in the way sometimes. It can get in the way of, of seeing actually what's there because the memory will project an idea of what they're actually yeah. seeing. That's why it has to float in openness. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, you know, they can look around here and see other parts of this. You explore the whole the whole sign. The fact that there's there's dirt mounded around the hole, right, and there's and that that gives us indication too, but it gives us an indication because of all the memory we have, all the layering we've done, all the holes we've seen, the hundreds and hundreds of holes we've seen that relate to different species, that mounding means something Yeah. in that context. Right, I'll, I'll be looking for that mounding, basically. I mean, I know to look for, for that, so I'll look for it to see if it's there. Mm -hmm. Basically, to give more evidence to support what I'm speculating might be there. Mm -hmm. Um, but that might, that type of sign might go unnoticed if you don't know to look for something like that. Mm -hmm. right?
So, I mean, I guess tracking often is really a process. The physical skill of learning tracking, a processing of developing the layers of mm -hmm. observations of seeing this type of stuff over and over again. Okay. First, you don't get the layering without observation. You need observation to even layer, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So observation, again, is the crux of it, is the the base of what's happening. No, no observation, no layering. Mm -hmm. No layering, you're not going to know what that is. But it starts with, obs it all starts with observation. Mm -hmm. So you spend, the tracker spends his or her time in the field observing, layering. Mm -hmm. Now, now I really wonder if we think it's the same thing. Because <laughs> then we might have two different, you know, we might have that's true. We might have that's two true. Different ideas about what we're. Now, I will be the first one to admit that you know. You haven't uh, been at it a lot. Right, right. I'm not at it all the time anymore, and that makes it different too. Because that layering uh, depends on a person's, I think, um, physical. Attributes, in other words, some people have better memories than others. But, you know, if I look at that now from a lack of a lot of experience, because those that layering atrophies, you know, but I look at that and to me it's some kind of mole um, because of the mounding. I mean, if that mounding wasn't there and that hole went straight down, it would, oh, it's a chipmunk. <laughs> but chipmunks don't leave mounds. They have very clear instruments, but so that's what it looks like to me. That's what all the layering the biocomputer spits out. <laughs> yeah, so the biocomputer spits that out with what layering is still remains in me and is not rust <laughs> not rusted over, uh -huh. right? <laughs> that's what it spits out. Well, you but spit out I must I must yeah. I must remain not intentionally, but I remain in openness. Yeah. And that is a fluid Thing that comes up, an assumption that comes up, it's fluid, and there's an openness to, well, George is really, you know, on top of this more than I am these days, and I'm interested to see what, what you think. Right, and just because I agree with you doesn't mean that I that, that we're both right. <laughs> right. I mean, it doesn't mean because we both say the same thing, okay, we're right. <laughs> That's there's right. Still, there still could be another possibility. There, there could be another possibility in that... Or else you taught me, because you, you taught me these things a long that, time ago, so right. you could have taught me wrong from back then. <laughs> and and that leaves and you that. open, and that means you're able to learn further about this. Mm -hmm. So we walk away from it with openness. Yeah. And the possibility of learning further. Now, see, you see the, the point that was important to me when you bring people in the forest, is that the fact of how much we're not seeing if we haven't spent the time to learn the language of the forest, I used to call it. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, we could just stand here and, you know, there's browse in the hemlock, there's, there's browse in, in, in the maple there. There's scrapings on the witch hazel, old, old scrapings on, on the witch hazel here. Where was it? I saw it a few minutes ago. Um, I mean, it, there's so much around us. Well, Look at the scraping on the hemlock there yeah. from deer, deer scrapings, the there. deer scrapings there, the eating the bark. There's real old, old ones on the bottom. Yeah, so it's one thing to walk in the forest and, and be told this, yep. but there isn't a real intimacy mm -hmm. at that point. You know, until a person takes it upon themselves to spend real time, mm -hmm. and, then, and then there's real intimacy. But, I mean, just a superficial, this is this and that is that, is not the same thing the way you and I have learned this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and there's no re there's no real replacing that way of learning 